All right, we've got a Princeton Reverb amp in, the 65 reissue. The owner sent it in for uh, reliability upgrades to make the amp less noisy, to mod the trim and the reverb. And I've powered it on, and here with the volume and reverb levels off, the amp has got a really high self noise. Let me move the mic closer for you. Hopefully you can hear that. If I bring the volume up, there's an increase in the white noise, but it doesn't get dramatically worse. That might just be a bad preamp tube. We'll check that in a moment. If I bring the reverb up, there's a lot of hum there and uh, some scratchiness on the pot. Let's see if the uh, treble and bass have any scratchiness. No. So let's uh, start by just seeing uh, what the causes of these big problems are and whether that's something that you could do as an owner without having any, any mods made to the amp. Let's check that first. All right, it's got the C10R uh, speaker from Jensen, which is a pretty good choice on these. The top rear panel is installed upside down. I was gonna remove this first so you could see the tubes but I wanted to point this out. This actually goes the other way uh, as designed. Uh, let me get this panel out of the way. We'll look we'll at the tubes. All right, I've got the rear panel off and I've got the tube shields off just to save time. What I want to show you is what you as an owner can do, and that is to change tubes out to see if that white noise goes away. So we're gonna work from right to left on these preamp tubes. I'm gonna start with V1. We're just gonna pull it and all that noise goes away. Now, if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can put power the amp off before we do that so you don't get a big pop through the speaker. And the Princeton, you're not going to get as big a pop as with other amps. It's safe to hot swap a preamp tube, not a power tube. But uh, if it, it all worries you, power it off first. So I'm going to put a new JJ ECC83 in V1 and see if all that noise goes away or stays away. I'm not hearing the return of the noise, but I should have signal now. Let me bring the volume all the way up. All right, so yeah, we have signal in the amp. These also may not be as good as we would like, but this old Groove Tubes labeled Softec uh, AX7WC was a source of all that big staticky white noise in the background at all times. So now let's check the reverb. So I'm gonna bring the pot up a little bit. Hear that hum. Let's just make sure that the uh, sin and return aren't reversed on this. Sometimes if you have them reversed, you will get that hum. I don't have the hum now. I have a little bit of st static as I turn the pot. I'm hearing the reverb through the amp, but that hum is gone. Let me plug a guitar into this real quick and see how it's sounding overall before I open it up. All right, so with the guitar. Promising, let's turn the reverb up and see if we have reverb. No, so this may not have been the issue. Maybe an internal break in the tank. Let me turn the reverb off, or the knob all the way down rather. Reverse those again and see if, despite the hum, we have reverb. There's that hum again. But we have reverb. So let's take a look at the tank, shall we? At this point, we have reverb, but there's hum. The hum should still be there. 
Let's change out the reverb recovery tubes first. That's another 12AX7. We've got a TAD here. So let's let it warm up a little bit. Bring the reverb back up. Still crackle and hum. Let's change out the driver tube. Remember, I'm trying to eliminate things that you, as a player, not a tech, can do yourself. Now, that's a Electro Harmonics 12AT7. Here's an old Fender one from the 70s or maybe early 80s. I'm let it warm up a little bit. And let's see if that makes any change. I don't think it's going to, but it might. In this case, no. The reverb uh, driver tube, the reverb driver transformer, is powered from a point very early in the filtering network. So if there's any problem at all with the filter caps, you will hear it in the reverb first. And I think that's what we have going on here. I won't know for sure until we get inside the amp. But uh, in this case, and I was going to do it anyway, but in this case, we definitely have to go into the app to track down and fix that reverb issue. But I wanted to show all these preliminary steps that you as a player can do. All right, all hooked up. I'm running through my cab. I had, to, while I was warming up, uh, the speaker jacks, the foot jacks, the input jacks were all extremely loose. I tightened those all up. And um, for those who haven't seen me do it a million times in these videos, I use a socket wrench with a half inch socket. There's that hum from the reverb. There are three likely causes for that. Could be a bad filter cap. Even though they're not visibly leaking, that does not mean that they're any good. It could also be the proximity of these heater wires, which are not very far away from the other wires, to especially here on the reverb, connection on the foot switch. So I'm going to bring this up to get the hum and move wires in that situation. See if it changes. Yeah, something, something a little microphonic going on in here. That's that old V3. Uh, but it is not the lead dress, I don't think, even though it is awfully close to that heater wiring. Usually these things have an extra half inch or more of slack, so the heaters are higher above the things, but I'm gonna get that tube changed back out just because I don't like that degree of microphonics. All right, we still have the hum, and we still have a little bit of crackle on that pot but we don't have the microphonics. Now, it could be some component in the reverb circuitry is acting up. It's less likely, to be honest. I want to see if it's maybe uh, in the send versus the return. And a good way to do that on these amps is for me to unplug the send and return on the reverb. And actually, we're going to use uh, our noggins a little bit. The reverb transformer driver is a tiny output jack, a tiny output transformer. So I'm connecting an RCA to quarter inch adapter on here, and I'm going to unplug from the output. Now, the, the, on this amp, for this brief testing, that's fine because this output is actually grounded out. Um, when nothing's plugged in, there's a, a total load on the transformer. And I'm going to plug my 8 ohm speaker cab into the, eight, uh, the output of the reverb driver, which is expecting 8 ohms. And I'm going to turn the volume up and see if I have hum. I do not. I should have a guitar signal there. Let me verify that. Just make sure I haven't done something wrong. By the way, for those of you who are willing to live a little bit dangerously, you can actually plug a speaker into the reverb out, you know, it says reverb input here because this is the reverb input on the tank. It's actually the output of the circuit. 
And then you have basically a half watt, one watt amplifier for really quiet playing. You don't have the reverb or tremolo on it, but you do have uh, the basic preamp and the EQ. But I don't have hum in that, so the hum is not in the send. So the hum is unlikely or less likely to be a filter cap, unless it's a filter cap only on that next stage, but then I would have hum throughout. So, I wonder if it's just a bad pot causing that hum. I will know more as I delve into this a bit. Um, these are the fun things. Let me go through and just really look at everything on the board very closely, make sure I have not missed anything. Well, the problem turned out to be that MOD tank. Uh, I looked to see if it had a grounding error. Some tanks are isolated at one end, grounded at, at the other, and some tanks have both ends grounded. It was the correct type for this amp. Just got to be a problem, then transducer somewhere. Uh, time to get a new tank. I hooked up an old Accutronics from about 1972 for right now. <laughs> Absolutely no problem at all, no hum. So uh, the amp is pretty damn healthy. Let's see how the tremolo is. Pretty sure the owner wants it slowed and deepened a little bit. No big deal. Uh, I will talk to him. Uh, I imagine that he's going to authorize me to change out these filter caps because there are only four of them. They're not expensive, and I've got to pull this board to do some of the other stuff he wants done. I'm glad that we are able to do this. First of all, on the reverb thing, you could see that not everything is immediately apparent, even to those of us who've been doing it for a while. It was in the back of my mind that it was a bad tank, but given uh, the fragility of the fender reissues and how many connections were loose versus the reg you know relative high quality of most MOD tanks. Uh, it was not high on my list, but it was there and proved to be the problem. Um, I'm glad I got to show you guys the, uh, the uh, reverb driver into a speaker trick, both for occasional uh, low volume playing as needed, and also as a way to determine whether a problem in the reverb is in the sender or the return. Uh, you can also plug a guitar into the return, but it, you have to do a, uh, a little bit of a impedance trick to it. It uh, really needs to have a buffered pedal to do that. You uh, also got to see me diagnose the biggest issue with the amp, which is that big uh, background noise issue. Uh, that was just a 12x7. And uh, for those of you who are new to this, you got to hear what a microphonic tube sounded like in V3. So let me uh, tap on the output tubes. They're JJs, which don't tend to hold up well in combos, but they may be fine. I will talk to the owner and see if he wants to do all four new preamp tubes, just to be sure, or just the two that definitely need it. But I think he's going to be happy. So I'm going to put this video up and let him see it, and then the two of us will speak. <laughs> 